I have been here since seven. I've been here for ten minutes. Morning. Morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? to run like a hill running event. Cockleroy Hill Race, which the club thought was an awful lot of effort for about 30 runners. And it was dangerous, we all went up Cockleroy for traffic. So we decided to do the 10K. Started then, uh, and we're now up at a thousand adult entries, um, which is amazing. And we've got a really good person involved in the social media side of the launch. Um, so like the, the first event post COVID, we filled the entries within 24 hours, you know, um, maybe didn't quite uh, get that success after COVID, but uh, we've got really good kind of marketing now. So we get the places filled quite quickly. So. And the, the meetings kind of squeeze up, the closer you get, we're, we're more or less meeting every week. On the day, we're, we're out and about, around about eight o'clock, we start setting the course up. Um, the roads don't close till early afternoon but we've got to get all the signage out onto the road so we've got to get the peel set up for the uh, for the finish so uh, yeah we're busy from sort of seven eight hours before the actual event on on the day of the race this is a really busy junction for the race The roads are partly closed, um, we, we, we do close some of the roads completely for a short period, um, but it's really trying not to annoy motorists and so on, especially around the, sort of the Sainsbury's end, uh, the Sainsbury's, the BP garage around there, it's, uh, it gets very busy there and the roads are still open, um, so that's tricky. And the finish is, is tricky, you've got you know up to a thousand runners finishing within sort of half an hour, 45 minutes and it's, uh, it takes a lot of managing to get people through the finish line, pick up all the goodies and so on and, and safely away. Alright, okay, right, stick along then Richard, okay. go over it with him. Well, then, yeah. two, two minutes. Just, just, just in. Yeah, so the layout of the peel is something that we, we kind of quite carefully think through. So it's a, it's a fantastic place to finish, you know, you're in front of Lithgow for Palace and all the rest of it. Um, but it's actually quite a tight time scale because the people who do the timing for the event, and that's a professional company, they've got to get all their gear over from the start to the finish on the on the peel, setting out the finish mat and, and the timing clock and so on and so forth. So that's all, that's on... The, the pathway in front, right in front of the palace, and then the rest of the peel, we have a system laid out where people collect their t-shirts and their water and their bananas and things at the end. Um, so there's quite a wee bit of logistics in that. You know. It's a fantastic place to finish the race. It's iconic, it's beautiful. Um, you're on the loch, you've got the palace in the background, the big grass area. It's just the most incredible. I, mean, I, I run a lot of races and uh, there's not many places where you finish somewhere as, as iconic. This is where the race starts now. 
And the other thing that's special is it usually takes us a couple of days to find out exactly where the start marker is. Because the guy who um, measured it has got to be very accurately measured the, the distance. He hammered a wee special nail in, a little golden nail. It must have been about five or six years ago. Yeah, right. And if it's not measured accurately, you can't advertise it's a 10k. It has to be measured, it has to just be a road race. So you have to get all the markers spot on. So we've now got to go and find out where this little uh, spot is. So it's supposed to be where the A for disabled is. But that's starting to disappear. Just watch for traffic, guys. Yeah. You see that there? That's it. Right, off we go. So we've stopped here because this is the location, or part of the location of the Junior Fun Run. It's only about 1.5, 1.6k. And uh, uh, the route really uh, takes us through, up the high street, around the back there, and through this area here. Great view of the, uh, the palace. And then the route goes on way behind the palace and finishes in the field. It's not been on for all the 10k, it started about 1995, so a few years after the first race and all the kids got a wee fun medal. So this section of the route is about the 4.5k mark. The runners come from here and go all the way around the back of the loch. It's probably one of the most scenic spots, uh, and this race is known as one of the most scenic races, scenic races in Scotland. And the photographers that we have, we try to make sure every runner gets a, a free photograph, or two or three photographs, and the photographers, you know, position themselves here and try and catch people coming over the over the bridge. This is us at the six and a half k mark, just at the end of the Lithgow Loch, and it's quite a wee testing out for the athletes. You can see here, there's quite a, a slope going up there over the motorway. It's, when you try to run it, it's a lot steeper than it looks, I'll tell you. Um, from our point of view, the race works pretty well because we get the road closed. But in the 30 years we've been doing it, we've had about three instances of some traffic on the course. with a couple of horses one year, a tractor another year, and a white van man. But so this is a bit of a nostalgic moment. Uh, although this particular section isn't actually on the route, it's, um, it signifies a, a well, momentous time, really. We, um, our race director, uh, uh, Graham Lawson, Spikey, as he was commonly known, affectionately known, uh, he'd organised the race for the last 10 years or so. Anyway, sadly, he passed away just a few years ago. But the club has um, decided they want to mark that and they've uh, created this bench here with this little sign which says, uh, Graham Spikey Lawson from all your running pals. So, rest in peace, Graham. You did a great job. You brought the race from a fairly, you know, standard level up to a, a really good level, and uh, he was a great, it uh, was a great buddy. So we're now at nearly the race completion, and uh, this is the bridge that uh, uh, allows us to enter the peel for the last stage. Lovely bridge, it's hardly ever, hardly ever used now, but we use it. We get special permission to open all the gates, and we come through the low port, and we finish the race. Very, very soon. Right, well, the registration um, post COVID, we've gone back to the way that we always did it. So everybody has already registered online, so they should have a number against their name. I largely organised registration uh, and also help with the data cut over so that the, all the data goes to the timing team that they need. A lot easier than it used to be. So now we use a, a time, uh, an entry uh, system which uh, we get a file of data from that. We've then got to sort that into uh, groups of runners who want to run in a particular time. Uh, we have to make sure then that we've got printed sheets for in the registration so that when the, the runners come in they can find a number, go to the right desk and collect a number. So they, we then give, we also have the fun runs, we have to do the data collection for that and then we have to give the data for that over to the timing team. We get a lot of fun run, fun run entries on the day, that's probably the biggest challenge for data because we have to then update the spreadsheet with the, the fun run entries on the day. A mat at the start and a mat at the finish, so basically they, they've got chips inside the number, they're attached to the number. Um, and when they cross the lines, they can register them, so it's quite automatic now. It used to be different, it used to be someone with a stopwatch uh, and people writing down the numbers as they cross the line so that we could correlate back the numbers for the times, and we used to do that after the race. Good afternoon and welcome to the 30th running of the WGM Linlithgow 10K. There is uh, a big hole round there that we're going to have to be aware of. 
Uh, as you are running round the back of the lot, let's be watching our footing. We do not want to be making this a multi-sport event and fishing out the lock. Within each year with the 10K, we start the t-shirt design process uh, just after the Easter holidays uh, here at the Lithgow Academy. Uh, it then gives us the next four to six weeks to complete the design process before getting them finalised and sent away by the time the summer holidays comes. That design competition uh, is always challenging, especially when it comes to picking a winner. We normally get five to ten really good options every year. Uh, and then we come down to the top three, which is often very difficult to pick a winner from. Uh, and it's always very, very close, but it's very nice and a real privilege to lead the competition to design the t-shirts uh, and to go through that difficult process of picking a winner. We started designing the t-shirts back in 2016. Alice Reading uh, won a logo competition. Uh, I think it's an absolutely fantastic, iconic design for the 30th anniversary event of the running of the Linlithgow 10K. The big 30 on there makes it really stand out. Uh, the colours are quite striking on the logo, uh, as well as having a nice silhouette of the, of the town sitting in there. So, very appropriate logo for the 30th running of the Linlithgow 10K. My name is Alice Redding and I um, design the 10k t-shirts. Um, so I took the colours of Iron Brew since that's very Scottish and then I took the 30 year anniversary and just jumbled them all together and um, took a nice wee skyline from Lamithgo as well and put that on it too. Um, I found it quite difficult to work the controls since I wasn't very experienced um, with it. Um, but then as I um, got some help from my teachers, um, I learned how to um, develop the design. event today a big thank you for everyone who puts this event off on uh, from the former Olympian Frank to everyone else that is out here today big well done and thank you from everyone at the WGM Linlithgow 10k